So as a first year analyst, my salary was, hey everyone, my name is Junaid and I'm a graduate analyst working for a financial services firm in central London. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about data analyst salaries in 2023. I made this video just in time before the end of the year. I always, always get asked this question. This is the first thing everyone wants to know when they find out I'm a data analyst. I was recently giving a talk at a university to finance and economics students. And that's all people wanted to know. What's the salary? How much can I earn? So I thought, let's make a video about it. So today we're going to break down first year or junior analyst salaries. There are lots of other salary bands as you progress into senior analyst, manager, or even data consultant. But I thought since this is the first video on salaries, I decided to start off with just first year or entry level salaries. Now, something you have to bear in mind is that salaries can vary so much by company, depending on the type of company you work for. But I've taken a look at lots of examples through Glassdoor, Indeed, Morgan McKinley, and calculated averages to come to a good range. Another thing to note is that if you work for a company in the public sector, it's likely you'll be paid less than if you were to work in the private sector. This isn't the case across the board, but in general, private sector remuneration tends to be better at the expense of work-life balance. FinTech or financial services roles tend to pay better for data related or technical roles. And this was something that stood out to me when I was doing my research. Companies like Google or Bloomberg LP tend to pay on the higher end of the pay range for entry level roles, but often they do need specific qualifications or a specific type of experience for you to get those roles in the first place. Another important thing to note is that salaries in large cities or financial hubs are undoubtedly higher than those in other cities. For example, the firm I work for also has offices in Birmingham and the pay structure is different for employees who work who are based in that office. Now the pay discrepancy between different cities is slowly being leveled off thanks to remote work. Uh, I took a look at some really interesting graphs and that's showing that as more people get the opportunity to do remote work the difference and discrepancy between pay between different cities is very very slowly leveling off but again it's a very very slow change and location is still a very important consideration that being said we'll be talking about predominantly london-based salaries but the ballpark figures i go over in this video should be applicable across countries and other regions because most of the companies we cover are international companies and their pay bands or salary bands tend to be similar across the board so first year entry level or starting salaries for data professionals can range from anywhere from thirty thousand to sixty thousand pounds that range again depends on the company you work at the level of your responsibility within that company and the experience that you're required to have so now let's break down the figures for some of the different companies a data analyst working for the nhs the national health service earns a salary of 34 pounds whereas a data analyst working for Bloomberg LP earns £54,000. That salary difference has a lot to do with the fact that the NHS is public sector whereas Bloomberg is private sector. A data analyst at Barclays can expect a salary of £50,000. KPMG, one of the big four audit firms, pays their data analysts £46,000. Sainsbury's PLC, Sainsbury's is a supermarket here in the UK, £40,000. Another supermarket chain in the UK, Tesco PLC, similar to Walmart in America, pays their data analysts £31,000. Deloitte, another one of the big four accounting firms, £37,000. Amazon, a company that deals with lots of customer information and data, pays their data analysts £38,000. A data analyst working for HMRC, His Majesty's Revenue and Customs, another public sector body, gets paid £35,000. Their salaries definitely should be higher considering how much tax I pay them. Revolut, which is a fintech financial technology company based on digital payment solutions and banking, pays their analysts a base salary of £60,000. Now, the reason I included two companies which were quite similar, Tesco and Sainsbury's are both supermarket chains, was to highlight the difference between their pay scales and pay structure, with Tesco sitting at £31,000 and Sainsbury sitting at £40,000. Also, from the companies we've covered, you can see that the private sector companies tend to pay higher than their public sector counterparts. If you work at a public sector company, you might also be losing out on some benefits that a private sector company employee might get to enjoy, but public sector jobs are historically seen as more stable. Keep in mind these figures are accurate as of December 2023. Now, you might be surprised or not surprised. I know I was surprised looking at some of these numbers, but what I would do is definitely take these numbers with a grain of salt. These figures are averages. They were calculated from as many sources as possible. But again, salaries could vary depending on location, the division you join, or more importantly, even the title. A business data analyst could earn more or less than a data analyst, even if they're essentially doing the same thing. In today's market, I would be hesitant to accept a position that was offering 
anything less than £30,000 unless you really, really need to. If you have a good university degree and some relevant industry experience, I would definitely say you're worth more in the marketplace. I wouldn't know how much training or professional development that role would be able to offer you. And you definitely want to do more in-depth research into what the role requires. You don't want to sign up for a role that is essentially just data collection and data entry on data validation. If a role has been marketed as a glorified data entry position, then it won't really give you the professional development or progression within the industry. You want a role that's challenging and lets you put your hands into lots of different projects, gives you access to lots of different tools and software so that you can progress within the industry. There is a caveat to this, which is unless you're doing an apprenticeship, a good apprenticeship, in which case 30,000 pounds or even below is a very, very good starting salary. Now, it's important to remember that we've been discussing base salaries. We haven't taken into account any bonuses, any bonus structure that a company might have. Total compensation works out to be the sum total of your base salary and any bonuses that you've earned over the year. Now, why do I mention the bonus? A bonus is an important thing to consider because it can take the advertised base salary to a much, much higher level. If we take a look at our table of breakdowns, we can see that KPMG pays a higher base salary than Sainsbury's, but let's say KPMG doesn't offer you any bonus, but Sainsbury's does. Sainsbury's offers a bonus of 15,000 pounds, in which case the total compensation for Sainsbury's is higher than that of KPMG even though KPMG has a higher base salary. Bonus figures are a little trickier to find out, but if you want a video explaining the bonus structure that a lot of companies use, let me know down in the comments below and I'll make a video on that. And there you have it, a quick look and breakdown of some of the entry level or first year analyst starting salaries for data professionals. If you'd like to know more about salary progression within the role as you become senior analyst, maybe your data manager or even data consultant, I'll be making a follow up video to this regarding that. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.